So let's take a look at the five different glass fountain lantern manufacturers that I've got represented here. And we're gonna take a close up, especially one thing that's very interesting is how these glass founts are like in and affixed into the lantern. The, the five manufacturers that I have represented here are the CT Ham Company, the Winfield Warren Company, SG&L, the Steam Gauge and Lantern Company. We've got a really neat one from the NCL, the Nail uh, City Lantern Company. And then in the back here, I've got actually three different uh, of the Dietz Crystal. And if you notice, the Dietz Crystal and the SG&L are very similar. We'll talk about that in just a second. Now, the reason that manufacturers came out with the glass font lanterns is that glass being non-corrosive, they thought that it would be more useful in uh, environments where the fonts might get rusted. Construction sites, things like that, the glass, if it did uh, break, could be replaced very easily. But what they found is that that's exactly what happened, is the glass broke quite a bit and they were expensive lanterns to manufacture. So they, there was only kind of a short window uh, when manufacturers made the glass font lanterns. And with these, that window was roughly the 1890s to about 1915, somewhere around, right around in there, depending on the manufacturer. So let's take a look at the CT Ham glass font lantern. This is the one I have in my collection. There's a couple different varieties. We'll take a look at some of those pictures. But this one here, I love how it's got a little bit of tinning still on it. You can get a close-up. You can see the portholes there, the brass. Um, the brass fill spout on the back here. Ignore the tag, that's just part of my inventory. We'll do a, a separate video on that. But if you can see right there, it says CT Hams number zero glass fount. But what's unique about these glass fount lanterns is how the fount comes out. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to pop the globe out here. get the cone and the burner out and then how do we get the found out because if you look on the bottom it's all tin on this model though it's got this little release lever here and there's pegs on both sides that you could then turn and then let me just they don't make these easy to pop out because they don't want them to accidentally fall out but then it just pops the bottom off like this at that point you can work the glass fount out, and there you have it. If you need to replace the glass fount, you can do that. And here's your disassembled CT Ham lantern. The next one we want to take a look at is the Winfield Warren glass fount lantern. And this is a model known as the Good Enough. Here I've got a, a picture of an advertisement for the Good Enough. One thing I like about this one is how easy the glass globe lifts, spring-loaded in here, lifts so that you can light the lantern here. We'll take out the cone and, of course, get the burner out of there as well. This one has some very neat portholes, both on the top and on the, on the sides. If we take a look at the back, I don't know if you can see that there. The patent date is June 7th. Uh, the year is kind of blurred out, but I believe that's 1889 is the patent date on there. The one above it is November 30th of 1888. Now this particular lantern, um, when I bought it, it was the air tube here was not attached. So this was one of my first attempts to solder the air tube on. I think I did a a fairly decent job soldering that air tube on. And then I wanted to get the fount out of the bottom of this lantern. And it was stuck. Somebody told me that you can just, it's just threaded on here, but it was stuck. And it took me several weeks of putting in, uh, you know, PB blaster and WD-40 and, tr you know, strap wrenches and trying to get this out, tapping it a little bit, because of course you don't want to tap it real hard, There's, this is glass. But eventually, after six weeks of trying, I was able to get the, the base out. Let me show you how that's threaded in there. I'm going to take the glass out just so we don't drop that. And then this base piece here is literally just threaded on. Unscrews like that. And this is the part right in here 
that it was it was seized up and stuck. And then this found a little bit tight. Again, it's glass, so you don't want to force it. There we have it, the glass fount lantern on the Winfield Warren. So here's your disassembled Winfield Warren good enough glass fount lantern. All right, now we're going to take a look at the most popular glass fount lanterns, and that's the, the Dietz Crystal Lantern. And the Dietz Crystal Lantern, actually, I have four up here. They're not all Dietz. This one here is a SG&L, Steam Gauge and Lantern Company. But we're going to talk about all four of them together because the design is virtually the same. There's a couple of, of distinct differences. And we're going to start with the SG&L Lantern here. SG&L was then acquired by Dietz, and Dietz phased out the SG&L name by roughly around 1900. But let's take a look at the, the SG&L crystal. Now the top of these are all very similar, very similar in style to uh, like the, the Dietz Victor at the time or the SG&L Victor at the time. And uh, so that it's a, a thumb raise on the side here. And the fount is on, down here on the bottom, the glass fount. To access that fount, you actually unclip the one side here. And then on the SG&L, which is different on the Dietz, it actually just folds back on the side here. It's attached right on the side. And then we can, uh, if we took out the burner and the cone, we could get the crystal or, or the glass um, fount out here. But let me show you the slight difference on, on the Dietz lanterns. So on the Dietz, one thing if you, if you notice, maybe we can get a close up, on the SGNL that that was held in with a tab that's stuck out from the air tube, on the Dietz it's indented on both sides of the air tubes here. So that just unclips and then look, the font's already ready to come out here. We don't want to drop that for sure. And then that base comes out. And then the font just slides down from, from there. Of course, you've got your burner. One thing that's different with this one, too, is that that cone on here is a hinged cone. So that stays attached. And then you've got your burner here, which would sit into the glass font. So there you have the Dietz Crystal. Um, lantern. One other unique thing I do want to point out is that on some of the fonts, let's see if I have one of those. Yes, if you can look really closely, it actually says Dietz Crystal right on the font there as well. Okay. So the last one we want to take a look at here is the Nail City Tubular Glass Font Lantern. This is one that really got me excited about the glass font lanterns. And it just so happened I walked into a boutique type antique store here in my own local town. And this was sitting right there in the front as I walked in with a nice little $65 tag on it. I thought, wow. You know, so that's one of the things I love about, about lantern collecting is when you find those just gems in the rough or those, those great deals. So this is the Nail City Lantern tube, Glass Tubular. There's not a whole lot of these known to exist, probably 10 or less. The Nail City Lantern Company was founded back in 1877 by A.W. Paul. And it was called the Nail City Lantern, Lantern Company up until about 1897 when it became the Wheeling st Stamping Company. So this is the Nail City Lantern Glass Tubular. So let's take a look at it. One thing you notice about the Nail City Lanterns, uh, it's kind of um, indicative of their design, is this crinkle corner and kind of the, the M shape uh, on the top there. And uh, of course, it's got a nice, e well, I thought it had a nice easy lift. I gotta go the right direction here. There we go. And it lifts the globe right out of the way for the wick so that you can light the wick here. Okay. You notice on this one somebody had lost the the fill cap and used what they had around that's what i love about the about the ingenuity of the people back in the 1800s and uh, they they use what they had with them but let's take a look at how this font is 
put into this lantern. To do that, let me get the glass globe out. And we'll turn this over onto its back. This has a very unique spring-loaded clasp. See these two wires on the side? So these are spring-loaded, so we can work the wires out on one side, and then this kind of comes out of the way. And then do the same on the other side, and that wire comes out of the way. And that allows this pan on the bottom to come out which would then allow this globe. And notice how they even put nice little feet on there so that the, if they did get any water in there, there would be a little bit of air that could circulate and help keep that from rusting. Okay. Oh, it's, there it is. It pops right out. You always want to be careful when you're using these because you never know when it's going to come loose. So there's the fountain, very similar to, all, to the other lanterns. And now if you look up from underneath, you don't see this very often, the underneath of a lantern, there's the wick going into the burner there. So that's the Nail City Lantern. All right, now let's have some fun with these glass fountain lanterns. I've never seen many of these at all lit, but I guarantee you I've never seen glass fountain lanterns from five manufacturers lit at the same time. So give me a few minutes. We're going to light all of these glass fountain lanterns. So here we have lamp oil in all seven of these crystal or glass fountain lanterns. And by far the easiest one to get the oil into was the Nail City Lantern. That globe moved out of the way. I could use a traditional funnel. I had to use kind of a fancy funnel to get it into the rest of these. But let's have some fun. Let's light these up and see if we can get seven crystal or glass fountain lanterns going at the same time. There's our SGNL. Okay, we need a little more wick here. Still smoking a little bit. Probably hasn't been lit in a hundred years. But like a typical Dietz, it's going. The next Dietz crystal. There we go. Here's a really pretty Dietz crystal with a blue globe. Notice how the blue globe almost has like a, a dark green look to it. So let's get that one. These are starting to get warm on top here. Now the Winfield Warren. Good enough one. Remember, this has the spring loaded lift. Very easy to lift. You get it? Let's try from this angle here. There we go. That way I went back a little bit.
Next we have our CT Ham glass fount lantern. Fount with the O-U-N-T. Remember, all of these lanterns are over a hundred years old. And look at this. I mean, the quality, the craftsmanship of early America is just amazing. Let's get that guy up front so you can see him too. And then here's one that I don't think any of us have seen lit, the NCL glass tubular. So, Nail City Lantern, at least 120 years old, maybe 125 year old lantern. Oops, I gotta remember this always goes this way. But notice again how the, the glass just moves right out of the way. We were able to light it very easily. We were able to fill the font very easily. Come on, you can do it. Still got an old wick in there, so we'll see if it... There we go. So there you have it. Seven different glass fount lanterns all lit at the same time. So if you like what you're seeing here, if you're liking watching the videos with me, make sure to subscribe, make sure to click like uh, on the video, share it with friends as well. And we're gonna come back with some more Great Lantern videos coming up soon. Thanks guys.